All right, so I changed it to this. You gotta walk the walk before you talk the talk. I heard that the first time in a Gansu movie. Um, basically, there was a guy saying, like, you gotta walk the walk before you talk the talk, see? I'm like, what the hell is that supposed to mean? That doesn't make any sense. But eventually it started making sense, especially when I started getting into marketing, it did make a lot of sense. Now what does it mean to me? And when does that making sense to me? The first time I left home, I'm from Chile by the way, I got an internship in Disney World. Okay, awesome. I'm like, yeah, really? So let's go for it. I, I can speak English, yeah, sure, I can do that. So I show up there, they present my team, mostly Americans, and this is me. Hello, my name is Marcos. How are you? They just laugh at me. They're like, who is this guy? Why he talks so weird? And I realize that oh, Jesus, like, maybe I don't speak English. I don't know what the, what's wrong with me. And I, I felt bullied, like bullied by these guys. They all speak a different thing that I never heard before. I learned English in school, so that was like the proper English, right? And when I started like dealing with these people, they were all like 20 year old, 21 year old. So I had to like, all right, they don't say hello, they don't say how are you, they don't say my name is perfect. They say like, hey, what's up, how's it going? All right, well, I can change that. Like, since I actually start adapting to what they say, I'm like, hey, what's up, how's it going? I start getting replies, like, hey, how's it going? Oh, that works. Like I can be in a disco, like, hey, what's up, how's it going? The ladies will reply, say, hey, this works even better. Then my manager will come. Hey, what's up? How's it going, baby? No, don't talk to me like that, please. So I fucked it up. I had to relearn that you cannot speak to everybody the same way. And knowing English sometimes is not the answer. It's not. You might feel that you can speak perfectly, and you probably do. You know the exact words. You know the exact way to express yourself. However, the other side maybe doesn't speak the same way. It might be the same language, but it's not the same way. After I worked in Disney World, I grabbed all my money, which wasn't much. I go to the travel agency and said, I want to go to New Zealand. Because now I speak English, I can go to New Zealand, surf, like see a different culture. Bullshit. I got there, a completely different beast. The way they speak English, I was like, what? Is this English really? So I had to relearn the way they communicate in the same language. It was the same language, but it was a different way. So basically, I had to learn how to walk the walk, and what that means, basically, you have to learn how the people that you are talking to express themselves, or how they talk, and what they want to hear. So I'm going to do a quick um, little exercise. How many of you guys speak Spanish? Quite a few. <laughs> so I'm just going to ask you to just don't give away what I'm saying. It's just a little experiment. So, <clears throat> bienvenidos a la junta. Tenemos diversión, tenemos juegos, tenemos todo lo que ustedes puedan querer. Si tienen el dinero, nosotros tenemos la diversión, tenemos la enfermedad que ustedes buscan. Lo que ustedes quieran, se lo podemos proveer. So most of you didn't understand a word what I just said. But they probably think like, well that guy, he feels comfortable what he's saying. He, like, I can trust this guy. I just read the lyrics of Welcome to the Jungle of Guns N' Roses. But it sounded like, well, at least like, he knows what he's talking about. So it's trust. Like, uh, like Michal was doing all this exercise to you guys. Do, do you really think he knows what he's doing? <laughs> but at the same time, but at the same time, he's on top, he's here. He's generating trust. He's generating the connection with you guys. Um, like uh, Michal was saying, not too long ago, probably like five or six months ago, I was working in the Caribbean, so I decided to come to Poland, because it's so much better at this time of the year. But um, yeah, I was working in the Caribbean, Mexico, Miami, and my job was to sell diamonds and luxury items to people who didn't have money for it. To be honest, I'm selling a $40,000 watch to someone who makes $45,000 a year, and these people want to buy them. And my training to do this, to do this marketing, was from a full-on American person. It's a lady, and this is the way she was selling diamonds. So she'll come to the stage and she will do like, "Hey guys, how we doing? How we? Who you want to go? You want to go shopping? Let's go shopping!" 
you see a guy big like this, dark like this, like doing that? No, I'm like, I can't do that. I need to find my own way. I need to find my own way to connect to people. So, especially when I was selling stuff that I don't know, like, I'm sorry, I don't come from a rich family. I never held a diamond in my hand before. And here I am selling like $8 million diamonds. All right, well, how do I do that? How do I get these people who are going to spend all that money to trust me? I didn't have all the answers or all the words. So I said, okay, there's another way I can do this. There's one common language which is out of your body language and out of your communication and out of your language per se, there's something that we all share and we all share emotions. The emotions doesn't matter where you're from, they're mostly the same. The sad, the happiness, there's some things that you can do and say that will connect you in a level so deep that people will not doubt of anything you say. People will trust what you're saying because you're building a relationship that is really, really deep. So this is what I did with a watch. So while my colleagues were doing like, hey, look at this watch, it's full of diamonds, it's so cool, yeah, let's get it. I went in a different way. So I got on the stage and, all right, um, I want to share a story with you. Um, when I was a kid, my dad used to come to me and show me his watch. It was a beautiful golden <laughs> Rolex. That was the only watch he, he ever owned. And he was always telling me like, one day, son, this is going to be your watch. Because this was my dad's watch, and his dad's watch. And one day he came back home with a big black eye, and he got mugged. He got mugged in the street. And um, they stole his watch. That's the first time I saw my dad crying. And I will never forget that. Because it was so important to him to have something to pass something to be remembered, something that is family. So I worked my ass off for many years to actually buy that watch back. And I gave it to him and said, Dad, here, you deserve this. And you know what, after all, I'm going to get it back when I die. So it's all good. <laughs> he smiled, we hug, we're happy. I saw it. After, <laughs> after I finished that story, you should see ladies and guys <laughs> and all these are thinking like, oh, I can't be, if I'm going to get a watch to pass to my kids, it has to be an expensive watch, a really good watch. And I said, selling watches like crazy. People will go to the store and like, I want the best Breitling or the best Rolex, the best Omega you can have. I want it because it's going to be my legacy to my family, to my kids. So what did I do? What did I do there? I touched buttons that people didn't want to be touched. There's a lot of buttons that we have all over our body all of our mind and our soul, and we don't want people to touch them. But with someone rich deep enough and touch those buttons, you generate a relationship that is just so deep and so unbreakable that you will not doubt that brand, that person, that whoever is touching those buttons. Um, let me just I'm gonna get off the stage for a second. Yeah, lady. Um, Name me a product, doesn't matter what, potatoes, whatever you can imagine, just name me one thing. Teddy bear. Teddy bear. So, how do you sell a teddy bear to a 40 year old? Storytelling, emotions, you go back to that, you look into that 40 year old person that is your target, and you think, and you look, and you learn how he walks the walks before you talk the talk. You learn how to... Do you remember when you were a kid? What was your favorite toy? Oh, it was a G.I. Joe action figure. Yeah, but do you remember that your mom got you a teddy bear ever? Yeah, yeah, I never really played with it. Well, my mom got me one. And um, I never really took any importance. It was always in the corner. It's kind of more like a, for girls. But... I found it the other day in the attic, and I never noticed that it actually had a little bow on the neck that it said, I will love you forever. And again, my mom died five years ago, 
And she was a mean lady. She would never said that to me in person. But that was there all the time. That message was there through all my life, right in front of me, and I never get to see it. Bam! You have the guy crying like, oh my god, give me a box of teddy bears. I, I really want them all. <laughs> so you actually get to touch those buttons if you learn to walk the walk. Sometimes we don't have the time. Sometimes all we have is a Skype call or 10 minutes with someone. All right, you have 10 minutes, go for it. You cannot spend all the time saying all your unique points of sales. You cannot spend all the time saying like how good the price is. You need to generate the connection straight away. And even with, doesn't matter what product is, you need to look into that thing that will connect that to your client in a different level. We all, I'm not sure we all see, but have you seen Ratatouille? When the guy tastes that Ratatouille and he takes it back to when he was a kid, I'm like, wow, I hurt myself, Ratatouille, oh boom. The guy's gonna keep that restaurant all the time. I'm gonna use a Bartos example of Nike. What Nike does, they make shoes, right? They don't sell shoes. They sell you the idea that you can be better. You can break barriers. You can reach goals. That you are the best. That's what Nike tells you. They never mention like, and by the way, our shoes are with discount percent. No, <laughs> they give you that idea. And when you actually get to go to the store, you go to Intersport, big discounts, you look at all the shoes, and then there's a Nike shoe right there. And in your, like, in, inside you, there's this thing going on, like, you and I, you and I, we're going to win that marathon this year. <laughs> you come into my, you, you come with me right now, partner. I want this one's 42, please. And you'll take that, but not because the shoes were black or cool or with little bows and stuff. You buy them because Nike told you, you are the best. You deserve the best, and have, well, we happen to be the best. So if you want to be the best, we can join your, jo your journey. We'll be there. So even things like as simple as shoes, something that we all need to walk around, is not something that is a luxury. We need them. But they sell you the idea with their shoes, fuck, you're going to rock the world. Now I'm, I'm going to ask Steve to show a quick video. So just give us a second. And don't worry about the voiceover, don't worry about the subtitle, just watch it. Is that alright? You want me to? Trust me, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, I can't describe it. That is a uh, video that I find on the internet kind of proving the point. Proving the point that there are connections that go beyond your unique points of sales. They go beyond anything that you can say or write or show. Um, for example, as photography, when they say a picture says more than a thousand words, and, and it's true. I mean, sometimes something that you just show generates that, huh, like, that's awesome. Oh, that's kind of looking like it's coming. <laughs> Let's see if it works, otherwise we'll, we'll just jump into it. You get sound? You probably have to just take the... <laughs> just give us a second, it happens, it's a live presentation. So how are you guys enjoying it so far? I mean, how, how are you enjoying this, this initiative of getting all the people who are actually starting new business together and figure out how you can help each other? Is it good? Yeah. So is it worth it to do it every, every first Saturday of the month? Here? Why well, you can get there for today or Saturday, pretty good. <coughs> if it doesn't work that, that's fine. We can show, I can post it later in the in the web page. Though.
That's good enough. If we can hear some, the, the to someone in a different level. Find that level, and that will be the key of generating relationships that they are so powerful that nothing can break them. Um, I just have one more slide that I want to show you guys. Yeah? There we go. I'll, I'll, I'll read it for you. This is, kind of, this is Maya Angelou. She died last year. She was an American poet, and she wrote this, and this, since I read it, this is my marketing motto for the rest of my life. I learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget your name, but they will never forget the way you make them feel. That is a very powerful thing, because you probably won't even remember now my name, but at least you remember the kind of make you cry on Saturday morning. So that's, that's kind of what it is. And I want to thank you guys for coming. That's, that's all for me.